I'm Rishim Sajdeva and this is the Great British Chef's signature series. I started cooking very early. I remember making full-blown dinners at home when I was like 12. I remember biting into an apricot kernel when I was like about 6, 7. And I think that was the most ugly tasting thing I ever tried at that time. But that memory is still with me and I love bitter flavours now. When I gave up meat, I thought I was stepping away as a chef from five really good ingredients. What I didn't realise that I was stepping into a world of unknown ingredients which has led me create all of these dishes. So that was the turning moment where I realised, you know, there's sometimes you have to move back to actually move forward. Hi guys, I'm Rishim and you are at Tendril. We are making a really interesting, very simple roast cauliflower dish with kimchi and some pickled raisins. So for that, first up, we need a really good quality, fresh, clean cauliflower. We're going to use the stems, we're going to use the leaves. So just don't throw anything and very carefully just break the stems, use a knife if you need to. We try not to waste anything until it's just really, really like unusable and you can't do anything to it. With vegetables, what we're trying to do, we try and be a little more creative. For that, we did multiple tries and we finally figured out that making a kimchi from the stems will be really, really good. So what I'm going to do, it's really simple. Just take the leaves off, put the stems on the side. Tendril is a mostly vegan restaurant because this is what I like to eat. I'm mostly vegan. I've been a hardcore meat eater all my life. I've cooked and eaten meat all my life. Two years ago, I decided to challenge myself and change and see what I can come up with, what dishes I could come up with. There's one thing I couldn't give up, that was cheese. Hence, it's the mostly vegan on it. And secondly, because we can, because it's fun, you know. When I was writing the menus, we realized it was coming out to, mostly the dishes were coming out to be vegan, hence the name kind of stuck with us. I'm just gonna put the leaves on the side. We're gonna use them also in the kimchi. So when I start to ferment, when I start to make kimchi from the stock, the stalks are really hard to bite. There's, it's got a really strong bite to it. So I'm just gonna go onto one centimeter thick. The reputation of vegan cooking is definitely changing. Chefs are putting a lot of thought behind what goes on the menu. I think we have definitely come a long way from a chicken stock mushroom risotto with no cheese for a vegan dish. The reputation is changing in terms of we are getting very creative. You know, this dish has taken us about six months to crack. We wouldn't put in so much effort, we wouldn't go to great lengths if I was serving with a meat dish. So it would just be a side on a plate rather than the whole dish. I'm just going to add some salt to this. Ideally, you should do it by weight. So if, let's say if you have 100 grams of cauliflower stock, you should go in with two grams of salt. So we do that, we have some roasted mustard seeds. Just gonna chop up the leaves. So we basically just massage the cauliflower with the salt. So at this stage you can add whatever aromats, whatever spices you want. It's totally up to you. Just have fun with it, experiment. It's not, it's recipe is uh, just a guideline. It's not the hard and fast rule. And we just get a nice sanitized, clean kenya jar. You wanna fill it up till the top, not going to do that right now, but yeah, you want to fill it up till the top, seal it and leave it there. It should ideally take anywhere from 10 days to two weeks. You might want to burp it after every eight days to so just open it, release all the gases and put it back down. It should start to look something like this. I think it's, it's a lot of fun going wrong with kimchi, so you kind of know what not to do the next time. Once you crack the whole thing, it's, it's actually really interesting. So, now we're doing a simple cauliflower puree. So I'm just gonna take the florets out, trim them down. So you basically get the stock. It's again really hard to eat, you could ferment that, but we just wanna add one more richness to, one more layer to the whole dish. So we grate it, and any trimmings you get from the cauliflower, we grate that also. I love cauliflower because the textures you can get from different parts is insane. You know, you could just, once I've grated, you can just add a little salt to it. Just add a little spices when and you're done, you're good to go. You don't even need to cook it any further. So if you have any trimmings left over, you can just add them in there. Any broad trimmings left over, you can just add that in there. Now, what we want to do, just caramelize it on a very low heat with a bit of fat in it. 
a bit of oil. I'll go in with a touch of salt now. And just go on a very low heat. So this would take, depending on your range, this would take anywhere between 25 to 30 minutes. It will turn really nice and deep dark brown. Yeah, so we caramelize the cauliflower first of all because it adds the right nuttiness to it. It just it adds another layer of flavor. So we have fresh kimchi, then we have roasted cauliflower, and the caramelized one will add really good depth of flavor to the whole dish. So once the cauliflower is caramelized, in a mostly vegan or in a non-vegan version, you would add more chicken stock, you would add loads of butter, and you would finish it up with cream. So that's what it's going to look like. Again, very, very nice and rich. Beautiful depth of flavors to it. So what we want to do now is basically marinate the cauliflower in the cauliflower puree and the kimchi juice so that it kind of absorbs all the flavor and just becomes a bit more happier. So we'll just take a spoon of that. I've always been a little confused with what do you do with all the liquid that's left over from kimchi. You end up eating the kimchi. Now the liquid is too spicy, you can't really drink it. And it's too runny to actually put on a dish. So we try and again be a bit creative with it, see what we can do with it rather than just chucking that away. I think it's all mostly been used anyways, right? So yeah. There we go. Just a bit of liquid just to add the right acidic notes to the dish. Just marinate it there. Mix that up a little bit more. It's already got some liquid in it. So we just get a good, nice, thick piece of cauliflower stock. Put that in there and literally just rub it in like you would rub a piece of meat. So I'll just add a little bit more fat to it. Just going to drop that in, in the oven. The oven's at about 180 and I will take about 10 minutes. Cauliflower should be done now. Like I said, I don't want it to be super overcooked. If you don't have a grill at home, use a pan, high heat, touch of oil, and add more burnt sort of flavor to it. So I'm just gonna go on this beautiful grill. We're gonna start to plate this very quickly. A spoon of this rich bite of goodness. Yep, pop it out with this piece of cauliflower. It's got a nice smokiness, it's got nice burnness to it. We're gonna add some rehydrated raisins. We add a little bit of kimchi juice, a little bit of fat in it, and just let it rehydrate that. The sweetness just adds another layer to the dish, and it's got a little spices to it. That really cuts, that balances up the whole dish very well. And then we just super simply finish it off with any fresh leaves you got. We got some red bean sorrel here. We're gonna add, it adds beautiful color. And then I'm gonna add a bit of coriander oil just to add more, little more fat, but little good fat to the dish. Now we have the rich puree, the slightly burnt cauliflower, really beautiful pickled raisins, some bitter leaves. And now the showstopper would be the kimchi, what you nearly waited two weeks. Just put kimchi on top. So this is our roast cauliflower, kimchi, greens, and pickled raisins. Mm -hmm.